Isaac Hernandez. I'm Holly McClure. And this is Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. Holly, how are you doing? Doing great, and I'm excited about the show today. Wow. We got oh, yeah. Great yeah, we do. But you know what? There's a lot that's been happening lately with, with uh, Disney. Uh, can, you, can you give us a little insight on what is going on there? Well, I think like everyone's been seeing in the news, I mean, they took a stand against Florida and politically took a stand against Florida, mm-hmm. which I think it's funny because the Santos has also said, okay, well, then we're going to take away your tax privileges and some other things. Mm-hmm. And so there's been a political stance that a entertainment studio has taken. And um, with a $50 billion loss in stock and probably even more counting every day and millions of people and families taking away their Disney Plus and, and canceling it, I think they're going to see a backlash, and I'm hoping it's even bigger than it is now. And that's really what's important here right now is do you think that culture is starting to – maybe the pendulum of culture is starting to shift back again to where they're going, you know what, we, we just don't want to go where you're taking us, Disney? Well, I think it's Disney and Hallmark and others. I mean, Hallmark came out and said that every show that they do has to have yep. a gay in it. Well, they yep. already have other um, family entertainment companies challenging them and saying, okay, fine, this isn't what we want, and you, that's fine, you do what you want, but we're going to take yep. our business somewhere else. But Well, well that, and that's the point I'm trying to make, is do you think that the people are saying, we can't go there anymore, yes. and they're, they're revolting, they're swinging yes. back now and saying, we're not going to support this kind of thing anymore. And it's not just people of faith. I think it's people of family values. Mm-hmm. So it is definitely a faith, you know, based people that feel that way, but also family values people, people that that value their family and don't want other values shoved down their throats and yeah. and trying to coerce their children into something that they don't want taught to their children. So yeah, I definitely think there's a backlash. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, our guest today also has a, an experience with Disney right now, which uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, she was working on a series uh, that is owned by Disney, and she was let go because she wouldn't vax. Uh, so <laughs> they want to really control. <laughs> they want to control us, don't they? <laughs> well, let me, let me introduce our guest here. Rachel Day is an award-winning actress, writer, and producer. Triple threat, all right. She worked as an EMT and cadet with Phoenix Fire Department before attending San Diego State University, where she studied anthropology with a focus in archaeology. At just eight years old, however, Rachel began writing screenplays and short stories, children's books, and poetry. After a few years of working in archaeology, Rachel made the decision to pursue her dreams of writing, acting, and filmmaking professional, and boy, am I glad she did. Uh, Rachel currently has several projects in various stages of development. Rachel, welcome to Faith on Film. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, it was, I, I, I had to. What I was going to say, what's even more interesting is this was something that uh, the Vax thing, a lot of people will relate with because a lot of people yeah. lost jobs because they took yeah. a stand, religious and otherwise, and said, no, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what happened to you? So, I, yeah. So tell us, what, what happened with that? I mean, you, you were working on what series? A uh, television, television series called 911, and uh, gosh, we, we were in our fifth season. So uh, I started there, I think, uh, episode two, season one, and it's it's been my home and my family, like 15 hours a day, sometimes six, seven days a week for, you know, well into five seasons. So. And after all that, they just decided they weren't going to use you anymore just because you wouldn't submit to yeah. the vaccine. Wow. Yeah, yeah. One of the ones that had never um, came up positive on the test was mm-hmm. was asked to leave. <laughs> so it was an <laughs> interesting situation. Yeah. Wow. Was there? Well, I'm curious. Were there others that were asked to leave as well? What I have heard. So kind of, you know, how it went down was we were given um, a date to file a either a medical exemption or religious exemption by, and. Um, you know, they don't really tell you how many people are filing. Uh, they try to keep it kind of, you know, confidential, so to speak. And um, but what they do is they schedule an interview with you. So I um, kind of had my team on the phone. My pastor was on the phone with me and we it was an hour long conversation by Disney just being vetted on why do I say my body's a temple and what does that mean? And if I have never, if I refuse to take this vaccine, have I ever taken a Tylenol in my life? And have I, you know, was I vaccinated when I was a kid? And oh my gosh, what abortion and how do I feel? I mean, what? just everything under the sun uh, for about an hour. And 
you know, oh my, my pastor and I prayed before we went into it, and you know, it was actually a, a lovely conversation with them. It was very polite, very kind, and and um, you know, at the end of this, she tells me, she's like, you know, well, we're basically just making sure people aren't buying these online because some people are are buying exemptions mm-hmm. online, and and that's when my pastor kind of jumped in, and he was like, so you're admitting that you're vetting someone's relationship with God, like somebody oh, might. Church and have a pastor every weekend, but they might be closer to God than than somebody else in their own walk, their own relationship. And she had to admit, yeah, that's what they're doing. And she said that, you know, after speaking with me for an hour, she had full confidence that, you know, I was who I said I was. And and then, uh, yeah, about a month and a half later, I, I received an email with one line: "We've taken your exemption into consideration. You can no longer return to set until you're vaccinated." Period. And that was it. Wow. Did you get a chance to go get your things and collect your things and say goodbye to anybody? Well, we, um, my last night, so it was going to be on October 18th that we couldn't return to set. And I, I wrapped my, my last scene on the 15th. So I was able to go into my trailer and change and, and, you know, kind of say goodbye to everybody and, you know, uh, walk, walk out that night. So, um, yeah, very interesting. It was very heartbreaking because the cast and the crew of the show are just some of the most amazing people and humans and they've been my family and I mean Peter Krause, Angela Bassett, they're like you know mentor figures and and just I mean everyone was devastated. Everyone now Angela's devastated. a Christian so that's interesting to me that you know she's a woman of faith that's interesting that of course they're not going to mess with the with the stars the leads are they <laughs> well and i don't know if if maybe her if she did file exemption if that was approved or if mm-hmm. i do and here's the thing like i have christian friends who love the lord and they are it's like on their own walk they have peace about getting it that just wasn't my situation so um you know i, I, I can't really say as, as to but yeah, she is a she's a, a lovely woman of God and, and just an incredible human. But you know, Since then, uh, oh, go ahead, Isaac. No, I was going to say I I just recently met you a couple of months ago, I think, and mm-hmm. just based on the experience that we had at this conference you attended, I just in my heart feel that it was God removing you from something that was probably going to hold you back from what God right now has for you to do. Now that's my own personal opinion. But I just feel like there's something that God's got intended for you and you need it to be uh, released. Well, praise God. I received that. So thank you for, for saying that. Are you working on any new projects or have you done anything since then? Well, I, I have a few of my own. Um, about two years ago, I started creating my own production company and started producing some of my own projects. And um, so just you know, trying to stay focused on those. The um, meeting that Isaac is talking about was at a film festival called Content, and I believe it's an international film festival. And uh, what is what is the exact name of it? It's like international, or it's a, a film festival. No, no it's conference? yeah, it's actually uh, the name of it changes every year because each year okay. it's like Content 2022, which is where you went. Uh, next yeah. year it'll be Content 2023, uh, and it's it's basically a uh, held uh, held by uh, oh gosh. Uh, Christian Media Association. It's Christian Media Association Content Conference. Yeah. Well, and you know what's interesting is the script that I went ahead and submitted was a film that I wrote and we were actually two weeks away from producing about two and a half, maybe three years ago now. And it's a film called This Side or the Other and it's faith-based. And it... it um, we spent a year in pre-production, raising funds and everything. We were fully ready to go in San Diego, and the director came to me through an attorney and wanted full financial and creative control, including the copyright to the film. And I, when I, I you know, questioned her about this, I was like, what is going on? Ultimately, it ended up finally coming out that she had been meeting with a bigger distribution company who said if we took all of the God stuff out, they will give us much bigger distribution. And she knew I would never do that. So I guess she figured the way she could make that happen was to get creative control and the copyright and make those changes herself. Uh, I said, not on your life. Uh, the, the whole thing came to a screeching halt and I was devastated. You know, this was my, my first big feature film that I was producing and that I had written and, and had to walk away from it. And 
So I put it on the shelf for about two and a half years and, you know, worked on some other things, some short films and, and stuff like that that I produced um, just to kind of, you know, lick my wounds. And the Lord started putting in my heart really heavily, like, get that out. It's time. And I remember when I put mm -hmm. it away, I was just on my knees and I was crying and I was like, I don't understand, you know, Lord, I don't understand. And I said, I just, I give this to you. If you ever want anything to happen with it, if you never do, I give it to you. And I, I put it away. So flash forward about three years later, I start getting this feeling to pull it back out again. And I felt so, he said, they shut it down because of the, you know, the gospel in it. I want you to put more in it. And that to me, I was like, Lord, I'm going to write a film that nobody's going to make because it does deal with some serious things. It, it, it's, it deals with loss and, uh, you know, the contemplation of suicide and, and depression and a, a very dark holiday and, and all of that. So I'm like, Lord, this is already kind of, you know, willing to go after the ones, you know, the, leave the 99 and go after the ones. But if I fill this with even more God, it's probably going to get hard to make. And I just kept hearing my word will not return void. So I went through there and I just, you know, I just, I, I could barely keep up with my hands. Just felt like Holy Spirit really poured into this even more. I submitted it to content. It was nominated for Best Original Screenplay, which is amazing because most production, no, most faith-based production companies like, we love this. We don't know how to, it's not pure flicks. We don't know how to market this, you know? And then the secular world is like, we love this, but take the God stuff out. So the fact that content recognized it and and that was, was brilliant. And to wrap that whole story up, and just showing how God moved in that was I, I pitched to a panel called Boost. You had six minutes to speak about your project. And they basically their concept was it's it's faith, you know, filled like like minded Christians who want to give towards like Christian media and arts and stuff like that. And there's a pot that they collect and they listen to everyone pitch their project. And after six minutes, you know, you're out the door. And they said that they were going to go home and they were going to pray about it. It wasn't how eloquent, you know, eloquently people spoke. It wasn't how great your pitch deck was. It was just led off purely Holy Spirit, how they felt led to divide the money up. Someone might get a thousand, somebody might get five, somebody might not get anything. And they came back and announced that, I guess only the second time in the history of all of this, that one film was being awarded the entire amount and that every single yeah. one of them new Holy wow. Spirit to give the entire wow. amount to this side or the other, which was my film that they tried to shut down a while ago because God was in it. So exactly, I see, yeah, I, I can't deny that I need to keep, you know, to make sure that this happens. And, and that's where I met Isaac. And um, yeah, I mean, any, any and sometimes it's, and sometimes it's taking a stand and then, and then mm -hmm. God's timing. And I think yeah. everyone thinks, okay, if I take a stand, it's going to happen immediately because God's going to honor this. And what I found in my experience is a lot of times you do that and you think, oh, God, where were you? But it's timing. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's going through a process of a certain thing. And at the right time, at the right moment, then he brings it to pass. And, and it, then it's, I think it's, it's what I call the suddenlies. God does it yeah. suddenly. And I love when yes. that happens, you know. So yes. I'm excited for you because it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when things come yeah. together. But good for you to take that stand. Good for you. Thank you so much. And, you know, Priscilla Shire, I love her. Uh, she was speaking before about any time the Lord is calling you into something different or bigger. Yes. There's usually yeah. a wilderness season that is going to follow that. And it's always going to involve being willing to lay something down. And right. that's I mean, it, it's been, I mean, it was three years with that project, but since I left Disney, it was, it was eight months between when I left Disney and then when he showed up with this, with Boost. And I think a lot of that is just in that wilderness, you find out what you're really hanging on to. Mm -hmm. And I know in that season, it just huge epiphanies. It was like, you know, 20th Century Fox, Disney, that show, it's like, it almost became like a God in my life. Like it controlled every, every birthday I've had for five years was on set. Uh, every weekend, you know, almost every weekend I worked, we would do overnights. I couldn't see family or, or birthdays or, you know, go on vacations or anything. And just almost becoming an idol of you're so close. Like you just want to, you want to try to get that bigger role or that bigger spot and just came to the season where I was like, God, all of this is just going to burn up. Nothing's, nothing's for you. Nobody's getting saved watching 911 on Fox on Thursday <laughs> or Monday. 
The irony of what you're saying, no one's getting saved watching 911. Yeah. I love it. Exactly, right? Yeah. And, and I just, yeah, it, it was, I realized I was like, this is, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's true. Fun and it's great. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's entertainment. It's, it's fun and it's great, but it's, there's something empty in it. There's not life in it. And right. I just, I fell to my knees and I'm like, I just want to just recommit, rededicate just any of the gifts you've given me to kingdom work. And, right that opened the door to an eight month wilderness that just really, there was a lot of refinement. And I actually went from rebuking it and praying against the enemy, taking my job <laughs> to actually eight months later, right. where I was like, Lord, I'm down to $41 on my bank account. And um, thank you for this wilderness because it, it changed so much in me. So I think there's a reason, exactly like you said, it's like, yep. there's a reason and there, there's a season. You know, speaking of Hollywood, I'm just curious. You, you worked on the show Veep, and I don't know if you worked on it very long or not, but that's an example to me of a very liberal Hollywood. Did you come right. against other bias when you were working on other shows like that, or uh, you know, or did you find it was as a place where you could witness and you were free to discuss your faith? It actually, it's the second one, and I remember, you know, always just telling the Lord, I'm like, Lord, I don't understand. You gave me a missionary heart. I thought I would be making documentaries and, you know, Jerusalem and, and doing archaeology and, and all of that. And, and I'm you've given me this passion to to write and act and, and Hollywood. And I'm booking these shows and, and here. And it was literally a conversation I was having driving to work at like three in the morning. And I felt him say, I've made you a missionary in one of the darkest fields in the world with a global outreach. True. And that really changed my, I was like, woo, you know, and it wasn't like you didn't audibly hear, but it was like this concept just instantly in your spirit. And I just started praying. I'm like, okay, well, use me. You know, I always did my my best to, to have good character, but I didn't really talk a lot about the Lord, you know, because it is still, you know, you navigate that, that area and you're like, okay, let my, my actions and my, you know, my everything be a witness that way. But once I started praying, I'm like, give me boldness, you know, give me fresh grace and, and, you know, use me. I would have encounters in the middle of the night with a PA who was day playing on our show, which meant that they were like working that one day and, you know, you may never see them again. And, you know, just the opportunity opened up to just end up praying with people on set and, and people would come to me and say, Rachel, um, I know you don't know me. I'm just here for the day, but I feel like you're a safe person to talk to. And they would talk to me about, you know, just struggles and depression and, and we'd be able to pray and I would give them scripture. And, and I started praying. I'm like, Lord, there have to be more Christians on the show. Like, will you open my eyes? And um, within a few days, I realized that there was, there are quite a few of us on that show and that even our set medic, he's usually, you know, set medic's usually the first one in the last one out because they've got to be there when everyone's there. He was getting there before everyone and walking around that set and praying over it. And, you know, and, and then I would get there and I'd pray over the set and then, you know, the other people would get there. And so I think, you know, and, and it's a big show with live fire and big stunts and everyone's very tired. And but it, there was just always like it felt like protection and grace for the show. You know, we never had a bad accident. Wow. We never had anything, you know, and and. So it breaks my heart now that that's not there for those people because I, I love them so much. But, you know, it, it definitely was a place to witness. And there's so many people in this industry that are broken and they're hurt and they come from these backgrounds where they're so mad at God, but they don't realize it's like they're mad at broken people. And that's their reflection of God. And, and you know, it's not for everybody, but, you know, the Lord gave us the commission and sent us out. And those of us willing to go, it's, you know, it's not always going to be in a, in a comfy, warm place. And, and so, yeah, I definitely yeah. think it's a big deal. <clears throat> and by the way, having been taken out of that right now, doesn't mean that you won't go back. Uh, you know, God may have just taken you out right now to produce this film that you're, uh, that he needs you to produce. But at some point, it might be okay. Now it's time for you to go back and be that missionary once again. So, uh, it's right. it's not the, it's not the end of the Hollywood career. Exactly, and you know, I know when I stepped away, like it was just you worked so hard to get there that it was devastating. Right. But just everything, you know, that refinement that I've gone through, it's like, Lord, I don't want to be where you don't want me. <laughs> and if you do decide to bring me back, I mean, I'm I, that is definitely going to be a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting and really seeking that this is what you want. And if I know that that's what he wants, then that's where I'm going to go. So you're absolutely right, Isaac. Now, 
there's there's another project that you are part of, and I just learned of that one, by the way. You, you're too humble. You don't share all the wonderful stuff that you're in. Uh, but but uh, as I went to your website, I found this uh, this other movie that I guess is going to be releasing soon. Uh, what can you tell us about that one? It's, it's the, the movie Breath. Yeah. So that is a, a film that I shot right before COVID came about. We, we filmed uh-huh. that in Sicily, Italy, and James Cosmo, amazing actor. I mean, most people know him recently from Game of Thrones, but he's been in everything, uh, plays my father. And it's, it's, it's a movie about a geologist who studies volcanoes. And, you know, it's, it's a survival thing, obviously. She ends up, you know, having an accident and, and while she's at work on this volcano by herself and ends up stuck down in this cave. And so when you think that she's, you know, trying to obviously physically survive, the film goes a lot more into just the psychological aspects. And she starts looking at who she is, like how she's lived her life. She's a mother. She's a daughter. She's, you know, uh, as her relationships. And, and you know, it was really this this woman that had been kind of hard on herself and broken has to realize, you know, that that she does love herself. She does love her family. She's not willing to lay down and give up. And so I thought it was interesting that it got held up for two years because of COVID. Right. And it's really about this woman confronting all of these things about herself in isolation. And I feel like that happened to so many people over the last two years that I think the timing of it being released right now is, is interesting. But yeah, that's what that's about. Well, I happen to have a trailer of it. And uh, I'd like to show it right now because it really showcases your acting chops here, your acting oh, talent. Um, yeah, I, I just was very impressed. So let, let's take a quick look at the trailer here. Mommy, you remember what that is today? Happy birthday, sweetheart. <laughs> My name is Laura. I study the seismic activity of volcanoes. She is a geologist, just like Mommy. You're going up to the volcano too? Yeah. I just, I have to get some more soil samples. Definitely looks intense, huh? <laughs> it sure does. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, you you sold it to me because I really thought, oh my gosh, she just hurt herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, this isn't a faith-based film. This one's not. No. But but it obviously but obviously must be very inspirational though. Yes, it is. So, yeah, the director, John Riel, uh, mm-hmm. he and his sister, they also wrote it. So, Adriana Marzagali. And you know what I love about them is that if you look at his films, they're very strong, uh, strong women are the characters. And and I, I, I love that. I was drawn to that. And, you know, they're brilliant writers. They're great storytellers. And I had worked with them on a project uh, about three years ago before this called The Music Box. And we just, you know, we all got along wonderfully. We had the same passion for for filmmaking and storytelling. And, um, you know, I mean, underneath it all, obviously there's that aspects of just what is inside you that you have to cling to, what is your strength? And and so, you know, I, I think it's a beautiful story. And, and while it's not, I wouldn't say faith-based, that there's definitely elements to it that, you know, you need to decide, like, where are you getting your strength from? What, what, right. what do you cling to when, when you're in a situation where it, it yeah. looks hopeless? So. Oh, hold on, Holly. Uh, there, go ahead. You're, you're on now. I had muted yes. you. <laughs> I was closing. Uh, um, who, who's going to be releasing it and when? Is it a distribution that's going to be national? Is it a Fathom event? What type of thing is I'm, it? 
Yeah, I'm still learning all this myself. So I, I believe the last thing that I saw in there said that they were talking about releasing um, to streaming platforms. But I think that's still, I know we're getting closer because we're starting to see more trailers and we're starting yes. to see articles about right, it. But right. as far as what uh, Real Dreams uh, has, has decided on doing, I, I'm, I'm not sure yet. So we'll just have to stay tuned well, for that. Well, if, if people want to reach out to you, how would they do that? Uh, an email, a website? Uh, how, how would they reach out to you and maybe then learn a little bit more about what's going to happen with this yeah. movie? Absolutely. So they can email me at truenorthmessengersmedia at gmail.com. And that's that's an email for the production company, and that's an email that that uh, I have okay. access to. So I'd be able to to hop in there and and just see what's coming in and and answer any questions and and yeah, I would love to to connect with with people. Are you on social media? Are you on Instagram or Facebook? Or? <laughs> I'm so bad at it. My my management is constantly telling me you need to post more and you need to you know and I, I'm just. Uh, there's a, a million other things that I would rather be doing than posting and, like, <laughs> myself, which is the worst thing for someone in this industry. But yeah, um, especially if you're Day. promoting a film. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I will do these for sure. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's it's Rachel Day, and the last name's Irish, so it's spelled weird. It's D A I G H, and you can find me on on Instagram. But like I said, it's it's like mostly my cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to ask you as an Irish, did you like the movie Dublin? Did you know, you see I haven't it? seen Dublin. I, oh. I'm, I'm bad. I, I, I know this sounds awful, but I'm not a big... I don't watch a lot of movies or TV. You're a I just, really? I know, I know. Movies. And I feel like a lot of it, a lot of it was, you know, when you spend 15 hours a day there and shooting something over and over and over, and over, and over, and over again, that when you get home, like... That's true. Time. You know, we don't have a lot of time at home. And so it's, I usually, I That's, like to get outside. I like to go to the beach. I like to take my dog to the park or read or play sports. And so it's not that I don't love it. It's just, I, you know, well, and things are changing. I, 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 I see them more time yeah. lately, but yeah, I wasn't able to enjoy like all oh. cinema and all that, but. Well, thank you for uh, taking time to, to just, you know, share with us your story a bit. And thank you, uh, uh, we certainly look forward to seeing b uh, both this film that, uh, that, that is about to Brett. come out, but also uh, the one that you're going to produce sometime this year or next. Yeah, well, you know, the it, goal the goal would be in the fall of this year. Right. But I think our timeline would be fall of this year into spring of next okay. year. So we've actually started to reach out to some talent that terrific. Uh, I really would, so, would so love could you say it would, can you say it would be this side or the other? <laughs> it could be this side or the other of this coming year. Yes. <laughs> And, you never know. And on that note, folks, we've run out of time, but I just want to remind you that you can write us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And by the way, we have a lot of past shows that you can check out on demand on our YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube and look for Faith on Film TV, uh, and then you'll be able to, uh, to watch a lot. I mean, there's over 100 shows there. So go check them out. And while you're there, hit that little subscribe button. Uh, Holly... Rachel, thank you for being with us uh, today. And uh, Holly, Holly, of course, we'll see you next week uh, for another episode of Faith on Field. Thank you.